Greetings shippers, welcome back, and it's time for another episode of Surprise Ships. Now this is a series where we take a look at certain mediums and works that one might not necessarily expect to find ships in. Now of course, for the seasoned shipper, one knows that ships can happen anytime, any place, anywhere. However, there are certain works where it is more or less likely for this to occur. And so that's what this is all about, where we examine some of those smaller fandoms with some of those smaller pairings that don't always get their time in the limelight because, well, not everybody knows where to look for them. Now, as soon as I did the first one of these for Burnt, you guys said that you really liked it and thought that it would be interesting to see more of these. So I, of course, had tons of ideas. Really, this happens a lot more than people think. But of course, as always, too many ideas to decide for myself, so I put it to the people over at Patreon and they decided upon our outing today. And of course, that means that we are talking about Fight Club. And that means that we have already broken the first rule of Fight Club because the first rule of Fight Club is... You do not talk about Fight Club. Now, Fight Club was released in 1999 based on a novel of the same name released in 1996 by Chuck Palahniuk. The work focuses on the titular narrator known as Jack in the film, which works because Jack is actually an older slang for the everyman, which also incidentally is part of why Samurai Jack is called Jack. Thank you. It helps to give a name to the protagonist without actually giving him one, hence helping the audience identify with him while still keeping him a bit of a John Doe, because also Jack is a nickname for John even though they are the same amount of letters. Language is fascinating. So what exactly is Fight Club about? Well, Fight Club, believe it or not, it is a bit difficult to fathom because in this day and age, many people have seen it, and even if they haven't, it has kind of worked its way into the pop culture landscape. So it's easy to forget that when it was first released, Fight Club was actually pretty controversial. A lot of people were uncomfortable with or didn't like what Fight Club had to say because Fight Club was dealing with a theme that the 90s dealt with a lot, which was a kind of social unease and dissatisfaction with the workings of society, a feeling that one was a cog in a machine and helpless to change the way that society functioned, and that people weren't necessarily okay with that. Fight Club really brings us to the foreground, with a protagonist who can't connect. He can't connect with society, he can't connect with people emotionally, and he just very much feels disconnected from his own life. His apartment is entirely picked out of Ikea furniture, which he doesn't actually feel any attachment to, and he regularly attends self-help meetings for addictions, diseases, grieving processes for lost relatives all of which he does not have slash have never happened to him. The film is very much working through themes of disillusionment, anarchism, and a need to channel some kind of aggression into something productive or just to make some kind of huge change because society simply isn't working. The film in this case focuses a lot on masculine aggression and what to do with that and how to find an outlet for it, especially in a society where one feels that one is simply being crushed. While it may sound a bit specific to one group, it can be applied to others and it is still very very interesting to work through, even if it isn't something that one can identify with exactly. And actually, the film has kind of come around and is pretty relevant again if one takes a look at it. Although one might feel a bit disconnected because of the 90s-ness and because of the protagonists who it focuses on. So with all of that framework being laid out, the protagonist slash narrator finds himself becoming friends with Tyler Durden, this man who very much seems to be everything that he wants to be. He's very cool, confident, self-assured, and seems to know exactly where he's going in life and what he wants to do. He also also begins to form a friendship and have a slight romantic inclination towards Marla, a woman who feels just as disconnected and dissatisfied with the world as he does. All of this culminates in the two of them forming a fight club, a place where men who just don't really know what to do with themselves can come and, well, fight. However, it turns out that the fight club is more than it appears, and that Jack, the narrator, doesn't exactly know what's going on, that he may not be the most reliable person to be telling the story. Okay. So now is the moment where spoilers must enter. Yes, the spoilers must enter even before the ship, because the ship has something very special about it that actually, if you know all the details, will spoil the movie. So if you haven't seen it and you want to, then please check it out. At the very least, even if you don't come out with this ship, you will see the origin of a lot of memes and jokes and just references that people recycle to this day. Also, you'll know why a lot of people make those soap tutorials on YouTube. Human soap. Okay, so the ship in question 
let's get right to it. The ship in question is between the narrator and Tyler Durden. And the ship arises very much from the film verse more so than the book verse. And this has a lot to do with the actors in question who are playing the characters, being Edward Norton and Brad Pitt. It's very safe to say that the fact that many viewers find these particular actors attractive did very much play in to the ship. So this ship is very fascinating because it continues and incorporates the main twist of the movie. Once again, spoilers, this is your last chance. The titular moment at the very climax of the film is the realization that the narrator has that him and Tyler Durden are in fact the same person, and that he has developed a split personality that is acting out all of his inner frustrations and desires, and has actually created a very elaborate anarchist scheme to take down capitalist society, or at least create some massive upheaval in their area. So that means, yes, this is very much a self-cessed ship. It is a pairing of the protagonist with himself. And the works are very interesting because they deal with both the period before before the protagonist knows this and after. So you'll have works that deal with him falling in love with and having this intimate relationship with himself before he knows it, which is very fascinating. And people do work in the idea of the others in the group being very confused as to what is going on and looking in on this with a very concerned or at the very least perplexed thought process as to what exactly is happening. There are also fics that continue this on past the point where he realizes that this is his split personality, which makes it very, very fascinating. As in a way, sometimes these pairing fix become a way that he deals with and accepts this part of himself and keeps him under control. There are also very interesting fix where the person didn't get a chance to finish the film before they wrote it. And so they write the pairing, assuming that they're separate people only to realize that they are not. And those are very, very fascinating works to read. Although, whether they are or not, it doesn't really affect how it's written, because some of it is very much written, even the smut, as if it is two people, even though they are one, because it's a perception thing. Because Jack very much perceives them as two different people, even after he knows. It's an outward projection that he still continues to see. Now, obviously, the hurdle with this ship for most people is that they are the same person. How can one ship the same person with themselves? Now, self-cessed happens a decent amount, but usually it does involve two versions of the same character, say Connor x Connor, or an adjacent form of shipping can be characters played by the same actor. So admittedly, this one is unique, where the character is in fact shipped with himself. However, the film also aids in this in the fact that they are played by separate actors, which means that people have the perception of two characters, just like Jack, and that can help the differentiation with fix and fan bits. Also, it must be noted that in the film, this is very cleverly done. It's, it's there if you're looking for it and you notice certain hints, but it is very subtle and is very possible to go through the film if you haven't read the book beforehand without knowing. And it makes it very rewarding if you want to rewatch and then see just where those hints were and they're very short. Some of them are very small editing quirks, like a little frame placed here or there. So it's very interesting to watch from a film standpoint and indeed the film has been deemed to be culturally significant. Which one can argue whether one agrees with what it has to say or likes it, it certainly is. It very much encompasses a mood and feeling of the time as well as a certain film style. And for some that adds a whole other layer to the shipability for these two. There are those who feel that same person or no, there is chemistry between these two, a chemistry that must be explored. And for those wondering, yes, there is an OT3 between the two protagonists and Marla, which in a way makes sense if you think about it. Hashtag think about it. Now onto why some people don't ship them. Now, of course, on top of them being the same person, there are those who are against this ship because they feel it is very unhealthy and is very much feeding into the narrator's mental problems, and that really it's something that shouldn't be indulged, and that the whole situation needs to be examined in a different light, and that really shipping does not factor into it, which is very much something that keeps this ship fairly small, in that that is not necessarily the angle that people are examining this film from. Certain films attract shippers just based on their tone and genre, and others attract different sorts of fans, and Fight Club tends to attract a different sort. Not better or worse, just different. Lots of fans who are interested in examining it theoretically, and for what 
what it says about society. There are also those that agree with it and feel that the values that it espouses are something that they want to identify with. As for the pairing, yes, of course, as always, there are people who keep it alive, but it is very small and there are not that many because the film has very much passed out of the cultural mindscape. It remains there in terms of references and pop culture homages to it, but in terms of people seeking it out, that does happen a bit less often. However, I would say for those who are film aficionados or those who enjoy being up to date on what is considered culturally impactful film, this one is definitely a must watch and it is very interesting. Does that mean that it's for everybody and that everybody is going to enjoy it? Of course not. Nobody is going to enjoy every single film, but I would say it is worth it to at least be able to say that you've seen it. Also, so that you can accurately make your Fight Club jokes. The first rule about Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule about Fight Club is if you can, ship the Fight Club. <laughs> Oh, joke's so bad. See, watching it doesn't make your jokes any better. So, from a shipping standpoint, is it worth it? It is interesting to see how people got there and what exactly it is that drew them to this pairing even after they knew that it was the same person. So it is interesting to watch knowing about the ship and seeing if you come out feeling the same way or if you do not. However, again, as mentioned, it really stands on its own aside from shipping. The shipping is just a little extra on the film Sunday for those who enjoy it, that is. Because as one can imagine, this fan does have a tendency to side eye the shipping side of it a bit, wondering why exactly they are bringing that into it. As always, there are accusations of shipping goggles, which are thrown about, because there are some who simply do not understand or do not appreciate the shipping side of fandom and feel that it takes away from the rest of the film. However, it is entirely possible to ship and enjoy the film on an intellectual level. They do not need to be antithetical at all. They can just be two separate or at times complementary forms of enjoyment. So yes, Fight Club has ships in it. Fight Club has many things. Surprise Jared Leto, human soap, ships. <laughs> all of the things you need in one film. There are also some people shipping Angel Face and Tyler Durden. Even after what happened, yes. Because yes, this isn't actually a mono ship film. There are other much smaller ships that do occur. However, this one between the narrator and Tyler is the most prominent. And again, this is a small fandom from this aspect. So that was Fight Club, surprise ships. Have you seen it? And did you have this ship beforehand? Do you now? Is it something you're interested in exploring? Do you think that the fix surrounding it could be interesting? Let me know all of your feelings down below. And of course, let me know some other surprise ships or smaller fandoms that you think it would be interesting to talk about and shine a little light on down below. This has, as always, been a wonderful time. There are so many more of these to come so many more. Follow on social media to stay up to date, subscribe if you haven't, hit the bell, do all of the YouTube things, and of course there are more videos coming soon, so we will see you again very shortly, and let's get to that outro. Bye-bye. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all of my patrons' names on the side. There are, as always, new videos coming soon, so stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.